untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Jun's Citadel deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This is a Sacrifice combo deck using Bolas' Citadel as its main win condition. The 6 mana legendary artifact lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time and we may play lands and cast spells from the top of our library but if we cast a spell this way we have to pay life equal to its mana value rather than pay its mana cost. And we can also tap it and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to make each opponent lose 10 life, so that can also help us close out the game. So Bolas' Citadel often lets us cast a whole flurry of spells off the top of our deck, as long as our life total is high enough, and thanks to a couple recent additions, we can often just combo kill the opponent in the very same turn where we played Citadel, and one of those is Prosperous Innkeeper, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one that when it enters creates a treasure token, which we can sacrifice to add 1 mana of any color, so great for ramping into our Bolas Citadel ahead of schedule, and then by sacrificing our treasure, we can also enable some of our synergies, like Mayhem Devil, which says whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, Mayhem Devil deals 1 damage to any target, so if we sacrifice a treasure, we can deal 1 damage to an opposing creature, or maybe directly to the opponent's face, and if we get a few Mayhem Devils in play, thanks to our Bolas Citadel, we can quickly end the game. And then the Innkeeper also says whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, we gain one life. So that's incredibly relevant once we start comboing off with our Bolas Citadel, as we can use that extra life gain to potentially cast more creatures and other spells off the top of our deck, so we can keep comboing and potentially close out the game right away. And then another recent addition is Shambling Ghast, a 1-1 one -one that when it dies either gives a creature minus one minus one until end of turn, or we can create a treasure token, so it's similar to the Innkeeper in a way, and gives a sacrifice fodder that we don't mind getting rid of to enable more of our synergies, and also ramp into our citadel. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got a full playset of Voice Strider, which is also very important for comboing off with our Bolas Citadel. The 3-2 creature enters the battlefield and generates an 0-1 Goat token, and we can sacrifice another creature at any time to scry one. So not only does it enable cards like Mayhem Devil, but we can also use it to keep lands off the top of our deck once we have a Citadel in play, so we can find more action and exchange our life total for more spells off the top, and that can often lead to an instant win, especially if we have an Innkeeper, to then gain a bit of life back. And then we can also escape the Woe Strider from our graveyard by exiling four other cards, in which case it enters with two plus one counters. And then another couple new cards from the recent jumpstart include Chatterfang, I'm trying out one copy, the 3-3 legendary squirrel general has forest walk and says if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one -one green squirrel tokens are created instead. So if we're making a treasure token with Shambling Ghast or with our innkeeper, we get to make a squirrel token, and if we're making a goat token with Voice Rider, we also get to make a squirrel, even the food token from Gilded Goose, so ample ways to generate squirrel tokens, which we can then use as sacrifice fodder to keep comboing off. And then we can also sacrifice squirrels with Chatterfang to give a creature plus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of squirrels we sacrificed, so it can also be more removal. And then two copies of Yogmoth, Thran Physician, the 4 mana 2 4 legendary human cleric, has protection from humans, which is a pretty unusual line of text. And we can also pay one life and sacrifice another creature to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on up to one target creature, and we get to draw a card. So that potentially gives us access to more removal and card draw to combo with our Bolas Citadel. Now we do need to make sure that the minus 1 minus 1 counter actually resolves, otherwise we don't get to draw a card, so we have to be a little bit careful with how to use it. But it says up to to one, so we can always decline to put the minus one counter anywhere to guarantee drawing that extra card. And then we can also pay double black and discard a card to proliferate, which is a way to potentially put more minus one counters on the opponent's creatures. And then we also play two copies of Collected Company, not going for the full playset because we do have a lot of unexciting hits with Collected Company, especially at one mana. And then we also have a few cards we cannot hit with it, like Yogmoth and of course our Bolas Citadel. So I feel like two company is still powerful, but we don't have that many companies that the hit rate starts becoming less interesting. And then looking at the rest of our deck at one mana, we already mentioned Shambling Ghast and then Gilded Goose, another way to ramp and provide sacrifice fodder as well as a way to generate tokens for Chatterfang. 
and then the full playset of Lenor Elves, which can also help us ramp into Bolas' Citadel. Then at 2 mana besides Innkeeper we have Priest of Forgotten Gods, the 1-2 that can tap and sacrifice 2 other creatures, and then each opponent has to lose 2 life and sacrifice a creature, and we get to add double black to our mana pool and draw card. So not only removal, but also potentially allows us to ramp into Bolas' Citadel, especially for sacrificing Shambling Ghast and making additional treasure tokens. And then we've got one copy of Blood Artist as an extra way to drain the opponent while sacrificing creatures. And of course the extra life always comes in handy when comboing off with our Citadel. And then we mentioned every other card in the deck so far. The mana base also includes one copy of Phyrexian Tower, which can also act as a sacrifice outlet and way to give us one extra mana for Citadel. Then we've got one Swamp in case the opponent has like a Field of Ruin and we need to search up a basic. Then we've got a bunch of Shocklands with the full playset of Overgrown Tomb, since black and green are the colors we need most. And then we've got two copies of Stomping Ground, which does allow us to potentially play a turn on Lenor Elves, and then still cast a turn to Mayhem Devil, which we cannot do with Blood Crypt, so that's kind of the awkward land in a way, but we still need a lot of black mana for Citadel, so we still have two copies of Blood Crypt. Then the full place of Blooming Marsh as a nice fast land coming into play untapped if it's one of our first three. And then a couple pathways with the red-green one times two, two of the black-green pathway and four copies of the black-red pathway as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand up against a Lurus deck. So we've got Goose into maybe Chatterfang turn 2, which will then make a token if I play Voice Rider. A couple ways we can play this. Yogmoth also excellent with Chatterfang. So it's a black variety of a Lurus deck, so I could see a discard spell, Thoughtseize. I could technically play a turn to Yogmoth thanks to Phyrexian Tower. Opponent takes West Rider. So I think I'm okay playing Chatterfang. And then next turn Innkeeper also makes a Squirrel. It's not trivial for the opponent to kill Chatterfang here. Uh, Stitcher Supplier. Milling Croxa, Kolagans Command. So it looks like your typical Arcanist deck. Uh, Unholy Heats. And they actually had Delirium on turn two, which is impressive. All right, so there goes Chatterfang, that's unfortunate. So now what? I could still play Yogmoth. Not really planning on killing Stitcher Supplier. Yeah, I think I want to have more board presence before playing Yogmoth, so I can potentially draw more cards first. Of course, another Thoughtseize would kind of ruin that plan. So they're probably planning to sacrifice Supplier anyway. And next turn they could escape Croxa. I do have enough mana to cast a Citadel if I top deck one. Another Croxa from hand means goodbye Yogmoth. Oh, cannot escape Ostrider here. So I guess I'll hit for two, play my land out, make a foo token. And hope to top deck a citadel soon. Make my food now. Could sacrifice a food token, could keep it for maybe more synergy later. Yeah, I guess I'll hang on to it since I've got a lot of mana to work with. Get to play Priest at least. Could be a decent answer to Croxa. So, all about finding Citadel, 
while we still have some life to work with. Don't expect priests to survive. So essentially taking 9 damage. And a village rights, okay. I guess they're playing around priests. Hive could exile my Woe so that's potentially annoying. An extra Croxa. Alright, so three cards in graveyard. I'm not going to get to escape this Woe Strider, am I? Unless I use a priest now. That would put two additional creatures in graveyard and then I can escape Woe Strider. Might be worth it. So, I can play another Elves first, or I can keep it as maybe discard fodder in case I draw something relevant I cannot cast right now. So, let's make a mana. And then use Priests. Strider of the top. I guess I get to play both here. Gains me a bunch of life with Innkeeper. And then Elves I can discard to another Croxa. Alright, so that was a decent turn. And attack for one. No need to play Elves using my treasure. Arcanist, that's fine. So they don't have enough rats to escape Croxa. Gonna be a flashback looting instead. So can they find an answer for Priest is the question. Two cards left in hand. And a claim getting back another Arcanist. That's fine. Let's untap. Mayhem Devil, excellent draw. So don't think I'll need Phyrexian Tower. So play a Devil. And then I can activate Priest as well as maybe sacrifice like a food token here. Go full control to make sure we don't mess this up. Target the same Arcanists. And then I'll have to sacrifice one of my other things right now. I guess I can sack a treasure just in case. All right, and then they sack the other Arcanists. And then if I sack my food and attack for nine, the opponent would be dead. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a decent hand. We'll need an extra land or two, but uh, I've got a few ways to accelerate into this Citadel. Facing Castle Ventress, so blue-white control. Opponent foretells, could be all sorts of things. Could go Shambling Gas Tapland or could play Innkeeper. I guess we'll play Innkeeper. Opponent passes with three mana up. So resolving Citadel is going to be pretty tricky in this matchup. Can play a Mayhem Devil, maybe get that countered. Could play Priest plus Ghasts. 
I mean, if Priest resolves next turn, I could potentially play Citadel. Although we have to play around a 4-mana Wrath here is a problem. So if I play Priest and a Wrath, I'm kind of sad. Yeah, I don't have any great alternatives. Could just pass and make a food token, I guess. But I also need to get that Wrath out of their hand eventually. Yeah, I'll play a Priest. Don't want to attack with Innkeeper in case they cycle Shark Typhoon. Alright, Fae of Wishes is a little unexpected. Gets Rest in Peace that I don't care about. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can play Citadel right now. I should probably attack first. I guess I can also play Shambling Ghast out, so I don't have to sack Innkeeper. As it pays for itself. And hope there's a line on top we can play. Alright, there we go. So we've got our Citadel. Now rest in peace, DOS shut down a few of our synergies, so like I won't be able to escape Strider. And my Blood Artist, for instance, is not going to trigger anymore. Because creatures don't die, because they're not going to end up in the graveyard. But we still have some nice things to work with. So, probably play Mayhem Devil and keep comboing. Would love to find an Innkeeper. Let's sack Shambling Ghasts. If I can make another mana somehow, I could play a second Mayhem Devil, which would speed up the process, although I guess never mind, rest in peace means we don't get to make uh, treasure tokens here with Shambling Gas, so I guess that's another relevant synergy. But um, yeah, I think this is probably enough to just pass a turn, or how likely am I to combo off completely? Yeah, I mean, I would have to find another Mayhem Devil of the top most likely. Yeah, if they have another Wrath, I don't want to be too low in life, so I think I'll pass. There's a chance I could have combo killed here, but Rest in Peace makes it a bit more difficult. And yeah, opponent does have the other Wrath, as expected. So, sack more stuff to trigger Mayhem Devil. And then what do I want to scry into? Not another Citadel. Gilded Goose, probably not good enough. Uh, Innkeeper's fine. So I can play Innkeeper, play a land. And then I guess keep playing stuff off the top first before deciding if I want to play Strider or Mayhem Devil. Although it's probably going to be Strider. Could also play Yogmoth. But uh, let's Strider. 
And then next turn, I can maybe go for the Mayhem Devil to keep comboing. The fairy is fine. I know what must be done. Minus is on Citadel, we've got another. And then Mayhem Devil can make sure we kill the fairy as well. Although there's a few ways I could do this, but I guess just casting another Citadel and then using Priests. To get rid of the only blocker is also a fine path here. So let's try that. Could get countered, does not. Company on top. Sure, why not? Alright, that gets countered. There's only one other company, so that's fine. Opponent gets to shuffle my deck, so there's no Citadel on top anymore. Otherwise, I could have also tried to scry after casting company to put the Citadel on the bottom, since we know it's not a company hit. Alright, so Blooming Marsh on top. So let's use Priests. And then I can attack down to Fairy if I want. Could also go face and sacrifice Priest to the Woe Strider, which might be better. So we deal a bit more face damage. And I can also potentially keep comboing with our Citadel. Another Devil, sure. And a Citadel. So I've close to lethal here, hopefully no Author Sweeper. Fay of Wishes, that's fine. Gets Intervention, but opponent's not gonna live another turn here. Just gotta watch out I don't kill myself with Bolas' Citadel. And then... I guess sack a goose. And these can go upstairs, can sacrifice my food token. So I don't even have to attack. And we'll let the Ogmoth do the final point of damage. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a somewhat slow hand. If I find any way to accelerate into Citadel or Company, this could be fine. I think being on the play means I can afford to keep, but on the draw, this would probably be a mulligan. Sentinel. So it could be a human tribal deck. Oh, we've got Devil into Company. So it looks like green-white humans. Company will let you put a draw card with the Sentinel, but it's probably a worthwhile trade here. And then I'll main phase it to potentially uh, find some creatures we can activate right away. Alrighty, so. Definitely getting priests. Do I get priest times two or priest plus ghast? I guess priest plus ghast could be fine. If my goal is to cast citadel next turn, what gives me the best chance? 
if I get priest cast and they exile my priest somehow, then I wouldn't be able to get there. Whereas if I get double priests, I'm more likely to. So I think we go double priests, even though priest plus cast might play out a little bit better if they don't have removal. Just want to make sure I can sit it all here. Catilda. So now their humans make mana as well. And a lieutenant. Okay. And another sentinel. So opponent's going to get to draw two from their sentinels potentially. If I play Citadel. Which is a little awkward. Ooh, Yogmoth with protection from humans actually relevant in this matchup. So, does it change my plan? I think so. Let's wait to turn on Citadel and kill some stuff in the meantime. So, do I need to play Yogmoth right now? I guess I could use priests first, sacking another priest. Snag these two. So I get two Mayhem Devil triggers. And then... I also get the ability to maybe make a treasure and deal one more damage. So probably want to kill Catilda and the 1-1 one -one Sentinel. So before the sacrificing of priest happens, let's make mana, and then I guess I might still play Citadel here after all. And then... Alright, I guess my opponent has seen enough. I was gonna get to play Citadel here and have some fun, but I guess we'll have to try again next time. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Sequencing my mana is going to be a little tricky. I guess now I need green on turn one. And then do I prioritize being able to cast Mayhem Devil or having black? Probably need the black since we need triple black for Citadel. So might not be able to play Devil unless I sacrifice a treasure. Could play turn to Woe Strider. Opponent on Goblins. Or maybe Shamans. Who knows? Okay, there's an extra black source. So, probably still Woe Strider. Because even if I Innkeeper. I guess if I Innkeeper, thanks to Phyrexian Tower, I could play Citadel next turn. It's probably worth it. Even though having the Woe Strider in play already makes it easier to keep comboing. Alright, so this red-green goblin splashing for an Archomancer. Against Prospector. I'll take two. And uh, I guess I could even play Shambling Ghast and sack it to the tower so I can keep my elves. Alright, so that's it for this turn, but next turn with Devil and Strider we can do some serious damage. So Junt Goblins. They're probably still trying to play Moxus, is my guess. And then Black gives access to Sling Gang Lieutenant as well as the... Uh, Two mana removal goblin, munitions expert. Sadly don't have Mayhem Devil in play to punish Prospector. 
So there's no way for my opponent to cast Muxus right now, because if they sack on our Commancer to the Prospector, they lose the mana discount. It's going to be Grumgully instead. Can also be quite powerful. Perhaps even part of some combo. But uh, I'll take three. Alright, so I have the option of playing the land of the top. Although I forego the ability to play Mayhem Devil, because I won't have the red mana necessarily. So I think that's better. So play Woestrider. Play Mayhem Devil. I guess I'll have to sacrifice an extra creature here in order to play Mayhem Devil since I didn't have enough black. But so be it. Could sacrifice the goats. And then what do I try to kill? An Archomancer, perhaps? Since Prospector, we can kind of punish with a Mayhem Devil anyways. Ooh, Chatterfang's excellent. Another Mayhem Devil. So very likely that we can just win this turn. And our opponent explodes. Shatterfang was going to make an extra squirrel, which also gains more life with the innkeeper. And then we've got tons of sacrifice fodder with double mayhem devil, so the opponent was super dead here. Alright, good to see our citadel in action. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay. Facing Zalfren Void, perhaps a colorless ramp deck. Turn one elf is great. So if I want to guarantee company on three, I might have to play Innkeeper. And Priest not going to be particularly effective in this matchup anyway. We did draw the lane, so company should not be an issue. I guess I do have the option of still playing a Priest. Yeah, maybe that's actually worth it. So for mana, opponent probably still ramping for the time being with the Hedron Archive and a Cold Steel Heart. So next turn we could already see Ugin the Spirit Dragon make an appearance, which is going to be pretty rough. Don't have a Citadel to rely on, and I don't think I'm killing my opponent from 20 here with a company, as good as it may be. So then the question becomes, do I even want to company? I think I gotta keep it at instant speed. Even though I potentially miss out on a couple synergies. So, probably means just attacking with Innkeeper. Could still play an extra Elves or a Blood Artist, as I'll be able to use a Priest to make two more mana to Company. I guess a Blood Artist is fine. We'll get a bit more damage in. Alright, there's Ugin the Ineffable instead. That one's acceptable. It's gonna plus. And a Guardian Idol for free thanks to the passive discount. Plus a Mind Stone they can sack. Alright, at least they're on empty. And I should be able to take out Ugin here. So let's use the priests. And my life total is not super important in this matchup. So I'm okay sacking Innkeeper and keeping the artist for more damage outputs. I 
Machine Company. Finding Priest Strider. Alright, so... We've got a lot of damage in play. Another Voice Strider. So do I have lethal? This is where we start doing some math. Could even play a Chatterfang. And then if I double activate Priests, I might have the mana to play Woe Strider. Or I can play Lenor Elves, use one Priests, sacking Elves and a Goat. And then I can still use a second Priest, potentially. All right, let's try that. Yogmoth. So I could play a Chatterfang now. And then not attacking with the priest, so might as well do this now to figure out if we have enough, or I could attack with the voice rider first. Um Yeah, I don't think I need to attack Ugin. So this goes face. Then I priests sacking Voice Trider and the other priests. Trigger Blood Artists. And then I'll still have the mana to Voice Trider, which will also trigger Chatterfang, giving me more sacrifice fodder. Could even company, but I think Voice Trider is a guaranteed kill at this point, so let's go for the guaranteed kill. I'll get two tokens. And we'll start sacking stuff. Alright, sweet. So, dodged Ugin the Spirit Dragon and managed to beat the Ineffable. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Shambling Ghast and Priests and even Innkeeper all ramping us towards Bolas the Citadel. Facing Snow Covered Forest Sentinels, so, probably Mono Green Elves. Which, uh, you know, they could have a fast start, but uh, our hand's quite decent too, so we'll see what happens. Turn two might prefer to play priests, and then the problem with turn two priest is I want to play Chatterfang before playing Innkeeper, but I don't want to sack Chatterfang to the priest. Alrighty. So, yeah, let's still priests and then next turn we can maybe kill some stuff. Ideally, I use the gas to kill a 1 1 token so the priest kills something relevant. Although my opponent has two 1 1 tokens now, so I might make a treasure anyway. So the War Master and the Elites are pretty good against Forgotten Gods. Gotta try and find a Mayhem Devil, so we can ping down the 1-1s before the Priest makes the opponent sacrifice. Although, opponent doesn't have a ton of mana to work with at the moment. So, possible that we can just play Ball as a Citadel. And uh, combo kill the opponent before they take over with their Elves. Yogmoth is interesting too. So, what's my play? Don't have double green. Yeah, I might just play Chatterfang and then pass. And then next turn I can play Innkeeper, which would also trigger Chatterfang, giving me more sacrifice fodder for Priest, which then maybe ramps me into Citadel. Also gives me a 3-3 blocker for what it's worth. 
and Forest Walk also relevant in this matchup. Alright, Freilies, that's fine. A card I've tried in Elf's deck, a little awkward with Collected Company and Realm Walker, but can be great against Control decks, as it's a permanent that actually survives a Sweeper for once. Elisar Shepherds I'll have to deal with before they get to 6 mana. And a lot of elves. Alright, let me untap and then reevaluate. Alright, land. Could play Citadel this turn. If I play Innkeeper, then get a squirrel, sacrifice Ghast and a squirrel to the priests, make a treasure, then I'll have 6 mana but I wouldn't be able to use the gas to kill Allosaurus Shepherd, so it's a little bit risky. Alternative would be maybe play Yogmoth, which can kill the Shepherd as well as maybe the Warmaster. That would be a, a safer play for sure. Yeah, I guess I can try that instead. So, sacrifice ghasts and a squirrel. And then, I guess, make a treasure for now. Or I can just minus one, minus one, shepherd. Another citadel. And I'll just Yogmoth. And then Shatterfang can finish off Freilis. And then the question is, do I want to kill anything else? My legacy will avenge me. If I use Yogmoth, I could kill Lenor Elves. That way they wouldn't be able to use Warmaster unless they play Castle Garenbrig. Or I can just go after Warmaster by sacking two creatures right now. And then the question is, do I sack Innkeeper or Priests? Probably sack Innkeeper. So, let's kill the Elves and let them keep the Warmaster for an extra turn. Alright. And then, probably fine to play Elves. Since I don't have a lot of green mana to work with. Alright, no castle, so no Warmaster activation, just a clan caller, which I can kill with Yogmoth. So they don't have any amazing attacks here. <laughs> Triple Citadel in hand. Okay, time for Innkeeper. And I guess I'll use my red mana, sure. So that triggers Chatterfang, which has been pretty good for us as a one-off. So can use Priests, sacking Innkeeper and the token. Or I can sack Lanor Elves at this point, since I might want Innkeeper for Citadel combo purposes. So play that. Alright, so probably don't want to let them untap, so let's Yogmoth Clan Caller, which also lets me keep comboing. Maybe sacking the tapped priest. Ooh, nice Mayhem Devil. And. Yeah, opponent's gonna pack it in here, just too far behind, Citadel's gonna take over. Alright, so we managed to contain the opponent's win conditions, and the 1-1 tokens weren't too threatening by themselves. 
So yeah, definitely good to see the power of Chatterfang as well in this game. Overall, quite satisfied with how the deck played out today. A powerful sacrifice combo deck with the explosive finish of Bolas' Citadel, but can also win a fair game without Citadel, just by doing the good old-fashioned Jun Sacrifice game plan of Mayhem Devil plus Bow Strider. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.